future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. She's passionate about telling stories of amazing women who are rocking the world and empowering women to live, love, and thrive. Here's your host, Katherine Gray. Thank you. Thank you and welcome to Live, Love, Thrive this week. And as you know, we are sponsored by 360karma.com for our Women's Empowerment Hour. And every week, uh, we feature women who are living their life's purpose and using their gifts to make a difference. And today, we have award-winning fine artist Joan Scheibel, and we're going to talk about her journey to that place of using her gift for creating joy in her life and, and others as well. And then later in the show, we're gonna be talking to Althea Ledford, who is the publisher of E! Magazine for today's female executive. Right now, let's meet Joan Jibel. Hi, Joan. Hi. <laughs> I'm so happy to have you on. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. You know, I think so many people, uh, you know, they have an artistic gift mm -hmm. and they don't know how to like make it come into play. Like they're so busy doing their jobs or whatever. Right. But their dream, and, and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago with my musician uh, guest uh, who are living their dream and their life's purpose. Uh, but for you, that was that was uh, artwork. Right. And, and and tell us what kind of art you, you do. I do. Um, I do abstract art, which oh. is um, I think we have some pictures of it. So let's bring those <coughs> up. But go ahead. And I work in acrylic um, and graphite, um, mostly on canvas. Um, and I just uh, I kind of just stumbled into um, painting again about six years ago. Wow. And 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 I'd like to like really talk about what your journey was from beginning to here mm -hmm. because I think as we as we know um, it, it, it's it's always like whatever happened in our our, our past or in our life kind of develops into who we are today right right, right. I mean I don't think I've never anybody who wouldn't say that that was the case and so I know with your uh, background um, you you were sharing with me that you had a very traumatic uh, thing that happened in your childhood that probably impacted, you know, the way you thought in the in the rest of your life. And I, right. I wonder if you could share that with the audience. Um, it was uh, it was very traumatic, and it was uh, when I was in the eighth grade. Um, a very dear friend was murdered. Oh my gosh! And we were kind of a a, a group of kids that all hung out together. We were like family. So. For me, so wait a minute. So you're hanging out with this group of kids, and one of them gets murdered. Yes, and okay. uh, and nobody knows and who the, did it. And the person who did it was one of our group. So, but, but you didn't know that at the time. We didn't know it at the time. And so here uh, you all hanging out, and everybody's like, you were explaining they were like the pallbearers at the funeral, yes, and everybody and was like, I wonder they would what keep happened. Us all together because we you know wanted to keep all of us together for support and uh, we basically were sleeping with the enemy so, sleeping so with, to speak sleeping with the enemy and so it was it was very traumatic um i don't it was traumatic then i think uh, in the later part of my life it caught up with me um as i was as i was explaining to you you know you get that catastrophic thinking um and you always think the worst of something because of something like that that happened that, the worst right. did happen. It didn't happen to the Joneses or it didn't happen on the news. It actually happened in your own family yeah. and stuff. Right. So I think it it, 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 um, it it held me back a bit. But, um, you know, it, uh, a, a lot of fear, a lot of uh, hesitation, which I don't. Yeah, I would think if someone in your inner circle was trust. found to have yeah. murdered one of your friends, it, it would definitely impact your feelings of trust. Right. I mean, that seems yeah. like a normal. Yeah. You know. How did you get past that? Did that was that therapy, or how did you? Is it do you work through that in your art, or I mean, like, how did you work through something like that? You know, it was such a. Tr it seems like it was so long ago, which it was. I, you know, I think you just kind of. I always. I have. I have have great parents yeah 
great family. So right. that was always fantastic. Right. So you you obviously the live support. in the present because you're like kind of yeah. saying that was then, this is now, which is right. a very healthy way to look at it. Right. Yeah. But you just kind of and and I was discovering new avenues of uh, mm -hmm. you know I went through high school. I was playing competitive tennis, but I also was doing art and uh, at the end of high school um i always was seeking something outside of high school like bigger than i got a full scholarship to otis parsons which is uh, like one of the most famous art schools yes and uh, started there and so uh, you always had this artistic gift i did and i always had an athletic gift so mm -hmm. it was kind of trying to decide i was always like the two. yeah yeah that one's they're in the completely different world you're, you're one of those people everyone hates because you have so many <laughs> gifts you're like you have too many gifts. You took you took two. Which I have none. I <laughs> no. um, well. So, but it was uh, the gift was discipline right. in those two areas. Right. So I always had uh, a strong sense of discipline and wanting to be the best. And then um, sometimes when you go through that, then you just want to have fun. Right. I want to have fun, yeah. and that's when I discovered yeah. West Hollywood. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. So, um, and so I kind you moved of there. I I moved to West Hollywood. I was born and raised in Monterey Park. Um, I moved to West Hollywood. Kind of did the the scene. Uh, it was. Uh, Is that when you figured out that you were gay? Or yes, uh -huh. yes. you thought, oh well, West Hollywood seems like a good place to go. And right, and I was meeting people, and and a few people from our school in Montebello. Discovered peanuts. I'm probably giving my age away here, but um, discovered so what peanuts. peanuts? It was oh. a club. It oh, was, it was because otherwise club. people would think <laughs> she discovered peanuts. What about almonds? You know, I don't know. That's what they're probably thinking. Snickers bar. No. Um, <laughs> so uh, I just started exploring and mm -hmm. thought, okay, this is this is what I want. And so I always worked, and I, and I kind of dropped everything. Mm -hmm. um, and how did your family feel about you being gay? It was not good at the beginning. I was. Okay. Catholic school, born and raised Catholic. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents were very religious. Mm -hmm. um, they had a meltdown. My mom, especially. Um, and is that why you moved away, or it was part of the reason? Of it, yeah. it was part of the I reason. Think that's kind of common, I think. Yeah. yeah, but uh, you know, they were amazing, and they got help and to understand and came back to me and right it is a two-way street isn't it mm -hmm. like both parties have to do some work on that and right like and you have to be okay with it they right. have to be okay with it because like right. when it all comes down to it like doesn't it just matter that we love each other and right not and judge we each want other you to be and, happy yeah and uh, Good. Um, they were amazing and and they sound oh, wonderful they were always the most supportive I lost my father about eight years ago and my mom's gonna be 90 in September wow, so how wonderful but they've always been very yeah. supportive and just wonderful and always whatever I chose to do supported it but that was a big bump in the road and mm -hmm. um, it, uh, the thing that they went through is what did, what did they do wrong right and when they understood it wasn't it wasn't about them wasn't about them they right. were amazing isn't it funny how everybody does personalize everything mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. whether it's about that or anything you right. know we're always thinking what what did we do but it, it, it has nothing to do with us right right yeah right yeah but we all take things and personally yeah it's and, kind of uh, common human trait absolutely. if we get in that spiritual place we we don't do that but if we're living in that human place then then mm -hmm. we tend to personalize it and, and make it about us right and we yeah. bounce back and forth and all that yeah. kind of stuff so but it seems like at this time in your life you found this great balance so you you ha probably have the discipline and the fun like right. I, I think sometimes we think it has to be one or the other oh you either have to be disciplined or you have fun but right. you can actually marry the two and have a nice balanced life mm -hmm. and it seems like that's what you have now yeah I'm yeah, it's I was okay. saying well, to you, pinch me because yeah. I just it really has all come together, and I think it's just on your journey and on your road, you you're up and down, and you get through the tough times, you enjoy the wonderful times, but it to me it's made me the person where I am now. And right. uh, so so that horrible incident in your childhood, mm -hmm. then the coming out, then the kind of having fun and just doing the odd jobs waitressing, till, wait, waitressing yeah. doing whatever i could to pay but the it made rent you who you are today right yeah. and then as, oh and you work for you were an assistant for a celebrity absolutely right and that was that was a journey goes unnamed but that was that was a lot of fun and, yeah. and got to do things um and in, and that's something kind of 
mostly you only hear about here in Los Angeles. Right. I mean, most of the rest of the country or the world, it's rare that somebody is an assistant for a celebrity. So around the world, people think that's a really cool thing. And I'm sure it probably was. It was. And uh, you experience the most amazing things. You get to go to places that people don't go to. And But in the course of that, I thought, okay. You lose yourself a little bit, though, absolutely. right? You're kind of living someone else's life in yes. a way. And so then you wanted to come into your own. And that's when I decided to go back to school. Wow. And, and this was, what, how old were you when you went back to school? I was about 32. Okay. So if somebody's listening in their 30s, 40s, it's never too late to go back to school. I, I, I have a family member that went back in their 40s and yes. totally changed their career. And it's never too late. I, I heard about somebody getting a degree in their 80s or something. So it's never too late. I don't think it's too late for anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, if I decided to go back to school today, I yeah. would, would want to be a vet. That would really? be like that would be like gosh really? I would love to be a vet. Oh my gosh! But, uh, so I went back to school. I went to mm. um, Platt College of Design right. and got my degree in graphics and uh, came out of school and hooked up with a pretty well known uh, graphic designer at the time. And uh, we. Do you want to say who that was? Uh, his name was Lou Falcone. Uh huh. And uh, we were partners for probably about. 15 years mm -hmm. and then he retired from the business and I continued to run the business run and the business and so I've been my own business for about 20 years now so uh, that is advice I've been told a lot of people that want to start like an artistic career whether it's acting music painting drawing photography whatever is that they often like have a, a business or a job mm -hmm. that they're doing that pays the bills while they build that out so Absolutely. I know you've had this successful business in graphic design and still do mm -hmm. uh, the name of that is Joan Scheibel design okay so Joan Scheibel design uh, dot com I take it uh, or, or Joan Scheibel dot com is my uh, art website. is your art website so okay I don't uh, okay. I uh, quite honestly don't have a website for my business because I've oh it's I all just, referrals and and whatnot. it's uh, and, and your and, focus and, is on your art and I've now. had clients for for yeah. a lot of years now yeah. so it's yeah. uh, it's been for this I've been very years, blessed yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in conjunction with having that successful business though you about five years ago had I want you to share your epiphany about the artwork. Yeah, but well, I say going on six now, I uh, was kind of just uh, going through a change and uh, I had a Blackberry and, and I was standing on a wall and the sun was coming up over me. And I Where started, were you? I was in the middle of nowhere. I can't even remember the name of the city. It was yeah, like. But in the middle of nowhere. That's sometimes of nowhere. where we get our best epiphanies. When Absolutely. We, when we're quiet. Yes. It when was, we can hear our insides. And yeah. it was uh, first thing in the morning and I the shadow was on and it was on this green grass so I just started taking pictures and doing different poses and uh, then I thought god this is interesting and then I kind of developed it and then I started painting on them and uh, I thought oh this is this is fun and then I called uh, a dear friend of mine who is a wonderful wonderful woman Julia Salzar and said look I'm doing this kind of artwork would you want to take a look at it? And she said, yes. And she looked at it and she says, she was working at the uh, Eagle Rock Center for the Arts at the time. And she said, I'd like to do a show with so, you. And painting on photographs. I mean, this is kind of an unusual thing, I don't right? even know where it came from, Catherine. Yeah. It just out of the just, blue. And yeah. then from there, um, I just started painting. And I've had many uh, solo shows, collaborative shows. Yeah. Um, I know you've co collaborated with a lot of different artists. Do you suggest that that's a good way for people to start is to collaborate with other artists to do shows? I it was helpful because you don't yeah. feel so alone, you know, yeah. <laughs> and, it's, yeah. and it is a lot of work. And it's, and it's and it's and um, it's uh, I think with any artist, you're vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So you're always you feel exposed. And so it's always nice to have a partner. Right. In crime right. in that. So I think that's almost in in any endeavor that you do, mm -hmm. whether you're going to a party or you're going into a business Absolutely, or yes. whatever, sometimes yeah. it's nice to have somebody in it with you. Right. The, the two heads Lean is on. better than one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but, um, but now you do some solo shows and yes. I know you've won awards and mm -hmm. that must be very gratifying that you're being recognized in that way. It and is. It's, it's been, it's, the doors just keep opening yeah. and, yeah. uh, I just keep, uh, I always say, you know, 
I'll never lose my hope, faith, or trust. And, yeah. you know, I just uh, keep, keep walking going. through and yeah. and uh, building the confidence that, you know, do they like it or do they not like it? And then right. at a certain point, it's just like put it out there. And it's and just like a, a movie or anything else. It's like half the people like it, half the people won't. you got to get used to that. And that's a hard thing to... You know, when you're an artist, I'm sure that's hard. I, I know as a filmmaker, that's hard. Right. You know, some people love it, some people hate it, but whatever. You make it for you, and you make it for the right reason. Right. And you uh, just enjoy the people that really embrace and appreciate it. Right. 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 And yeah. uh, you know, that's the beauty of art. Yeah. Um, so you bring, like I said in the beginning, you bring joy to a lot of people, and I think the message here too is by tapping into your gift, which you've done, uh, it brings you so much joy. Right. It, it really uh, you know, it's, I, I wish that for everyone to tap into what it is that it, they feel is their gift. And that comes in many shapes and forms. Absolutely. It doesn't even have to be, you know, art or music or whatever. It could be, you know, starting a nonprofit like Deborah Lessie or it mm -hmm. could be, uh, you know, many it could come in many different right. forms, whatever people's gift are. Some people's gift are helping other people or. Right. You know, but whatever it is uh, to finding that gift, because that that's why they're here. And it's what brings them joy and happiness and passion. I, you know, I living with passion and 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 being excited about stuff is really what gets me through the day. And that's whether with friends, my work, yeah, going on vacation. It's just being excited and so passionate. If somebody wanted to uh, be an artist, somebody's listening. They're like, "Wow, she's like living my dream." You know, <laughs> what what would you? What would you tell them? What, what What's your advice to them? I mean, because you did go to art school and you do kind of work in a artistic industry, but the painting, you really did go out on a limb and, and say, this is what I feel in my heart and soul. I'm doing this. And then you started, you started creating it. You started partnering right. and doing the art shows. And, um, you know, uh, when I had uh, Janet Robin on a couple weeks ago, uh, she was talking about, you know, she makes her own tour. And I think a lot right. of people think that all this stuff happens to people. And the truth is, is that they make it happen. And I think that's the most important. You've got to make a decision and mm -hmm. and and move forward. And if you don't, tr you know, it's you're going to get knocked down. You're going to get punched. But you just got to keep moving forward keep going, because... Yeah. When you when it does happen, there's n no greater high than to actually. S when I sold my first painting, oh my god, I just I couldn't believe it. Wow, I couldn't believe that it. Someone appreciated so right. much that they wanted to buy right. it, and now you've sold so many. <laughs> yeah, and more and more, hopefully. Yeah. But uh, what's on the horizon for you if you could be doing anything? What's your dream, like to the next level? Because there's always a next. Uh, just to keep pursuing what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, Tapping doing in it full time. I'm pretty much doing well. Like the bread and butter, as you say, yeah. the the job. Yeah. Um. So I do work full time. Yeah. In, in my business, and at least it's in an artistic format. Absolutely, and yeah. I have my own office and my own business, so I can make my own hours. Yeah. But uh, I work pretty much. I try to paint as much as possible, especially mm -hmm. when there's a show coming up. Um, mm -hmm. I do have a show coming up uh, November 5th. Oh, wonderful. Where's that going to be? Uh, it'll be in Los Angeles. And okay. uh, the we're and they can final, find out about that at joanscheibel.com. Yes, and yeah. finalizing all that. And I will do be doing a, um, uh, it'll be a show where it'll be my work. Um, I'm doing a collaboration with Victory Tischler Blue used to be in the runaways and uh she will be having the runaways own. so some people don't know that's joan jett in the runaways in the runaways yeah. oh my gosh how cool so and now she's an artist she's an amazing photographer oh, and wow. so we're going to do a collaboration she'll have her own work and i'll have my own work so it'll be beautiful. a really beautiful show so I'm working very hard, and we're putting that together, and uh, so that's the next thing on the that's exciting. The agenda. It must be always exciting when you have a show on the horizon. It's really you yeah. know, something to work forward, you know, yeah. towards, and uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it gives you that. And is the extra real high energy. like when you go to the show and opening? You know, when you have the opening and yeah. everybody's there and all the uh, people that love you, and then all the people that are your fans and, and uh, I've yeah. just. Uh, Does the internet help you to promote your artwork? Is that it, some advice you would give to people Do they, about putting it online? I would think. Yes, I think any outlet you can find 
That's helps. the beauty of the internet, isn't it? it and really Facebook, helps. I you know, yeah. Facebook I use to promote stuff and right. and even show my work and uh, so I think any outlet. Um, do you think helpful. people have to have formal training, or do you think some people just have that innate gift? I think everybody has an artistic gift. Mm -hmm. So um, I do Don't ask me to sing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask Every me either. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me to paint either. <laughs> um, I think, you know, I, I didn't finish art. I didn't finish Otis Parsons. Yeah. Um, uh, and... I but the fact you got a scholarship, they recognized your abilities, I, and that must have given you self-esteem about that talent. Right, and then talent. I abandoned it for, yeah. you know, a while. But I did have a foundation, and, uh, you know, I actually almost go against the grade of what they would teach you in school. They always say, you know, dark to light, and my painting's light to dark. So it's yeah. kind of the flip the side opposite. of what you would... Yeah. learn in school can't put but, joan in a box <laughs> <laughs> find my way out um but i think everybody you know develops their own style and uh it's nice to have a foundation but i don't think it's necessary right i mean there's musicians that are self-taught right never can't read a note of yeah. music but can play right so some, some people need the training and other people, people it just don't. comes naturally right right, right. So where are you at in your life now? I understand. I know we just talked about the long, hard road through coming out. Uh, but uh, just to wrap up, basically today you're in a happy relationship. Uh, you have a partner and I have a, life an is good. Amazing partner. Life is uh, it's beyond. It's yeah. it really is. Uh, I'm just it's blissful and happy. And I. Uh, I always say, pinch me. <laughs> is it a dream? But it is, it is my dream come true. So life is, is pretty. Well, I won't pinch you because this is G-rated. <laughs> it's pretty but. complete. It's very, very complete. And you know what it is? I think, uh, you know, everything's in alignment. Uh, we're talking about your partnership. We're talking about you're doing what you love. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, all those things that took you to this place that you are today. Like, you had to go through all those bumps on this journey to get to where you are. It makes you who you are today. But isn't it wonderful that you took all those lessons and you actually uh, did something with them that – that, that created this happy life and you did create it like that's the part that I want people to understand is we take those steps to create it like you could have stood there uh, in that middle of nowhere and the epiphany could have come to you uh, I'm taking these photographs I think I'll paint them you know and then you could have said nah who would want right. to look at that right uh, I, I'm I'm doing my graphic art I, I don't need to be a painter but you didn't. You listened to your insides. And I, I just feel like that's the message here is that listen to your insides. They never steer you wrong. They don't. And it's amazing because you just it's almost um, I don't know if you in your work, it's timeless. Like there's no sense of time. Right. Sometimes when I'm painting. Yeah. I have no sense of time. Yeah, I feel that in uh, working on a film. Or, right. Yeah. And then, it's like you're, you're making a, a, a vision of art and you you can see the vision and all you want to do is get to that vision. Right. But uh, you don't it's not like a time like, oh, well, what time is it? I'm going to quit now. I'm in the middle of creating right. my vision. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's it's really wonderful. And I feel that's um, what happened with when I started on my my next phase of my career, which I do want to be, a, I will be a full-time painter. I don't have any, it, it just keeps happening. You will be a full-time painter. You said it here and I know you're going to make thank it happen. You. And thank you for everything. Thank you. you thank you for being on the wonderful. show. Thank you. Well, I I'm a big it. fan of yours. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to be right back with Althea Ledford of uh, the publisher of E! Magazine for today's female executive. Do you want to have more passion and purpose in your day-to-day? -day? Are you yearning to ignite your power within? Now, more than ever, the world needs women who dream big, inspire others, and are living their greater purpose. There's never been a better time to up your game and make your success happen now. Contact Danny Rukin for a complimentary consultation and find out more about how you can become more effective, energized, and empowered while making a difference in doing what you love. Go to www.dannyrukin.com. 
The Live, Love, Thrive radio show is produced by 360karma.com. Are you a 360 Karma woman? If so, spread the word. Be sure to follow us on social media at 360 Karma Women on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please like us and share us with family and friends. This is the year of the woman, and we are stronger together. The Live, Love, Thrive program is brought to you in part by Honda of downtown Los Angeles, supporting the equality and empowerment of women. And we are back with Althea Ledford. She is uh, the publisher and founder of E Magazine for the Executive Women and uh, Executive Females. Yeah, it's E and Magazine for today's female executive. for today's female executive. There's a mouthful. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, she also has another new company she's going to tell us about. So welcome, Althea. Thank you. Thank so you. Happy to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so um, I want to talk a little bit about. Uh, your childhood, because I always think uh, where people come from, their path, always leads to where they end up. And uh, I I know you were uh, always from the get-go, we were talking about, you were always a real, like, child innovator. Yes. Yeah. Yes, true, true, true. So tell me a little bit about that. Well, I was classified as a gifted child when I was uh, younger, which was, I was gifted and goofy, if there's such a thing. So I was really super optimistic, but I used to come up with ideas and um, think, and what made me have confidence in those ideas is I actually would see them start manifesting. I'd actually start seeing the, whatever I thought of in terms of a piece of equipment or technology. And, but there wasn't anything existing. I would just talk about it and and I would, but I didn't have anywhere to take it. I didn't know what to do with it. I just knew I could do it. Yeah. So you just knew you were kind of a visionary. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But there wasn't that word then. I, nobody right. was, was talking didn't about it. I know what the word was. No. And, and I know you told me a cute story about uh, in your you wanted to be in the gifted class in school and you wrote a poem. Yes. Yes. And the te- I actually still have the poem. Really? I, I wrote, yeah, I still have it written down. And my the- mother saved it. But it was a poem about love. And I, g- I gave it to my teacher. I wanted to be in the gifted program because all my friends were there. And so I gave her the poem and she accused me of plagiarizing the poem. She didn't use the word plagiarize. She said, you didn't write this. And I said, and so then I thought, wow, is it good enough that she actually thought a grown up wrote it and published it that I copied it out of a book. So I, f- I figured, wow, I must really you have, have a something gift. here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So oh my gosh. Yeah, I got in the program. though. You got in the yeah, program yes, anyway. I yes. love that. I love that. And so um, I know you were telling me, like, you know, oddly enough, at a young age, you just thought uh, gender and black and white and all of that was just irrelevant, that you, the sky was the limit. Yes. A- and that your mom, oddly enough, was completely opposite. Like, she was very fear-driven, right? Yes, yes, Which yes. is interesting that you would come out of that not being the same way. Oh, yeah. But I know you told me there was a book that was a, had a big impact on you. What was that? Yeah, that was Jonathan Livingston Siegel. I ne- I'll never forget it. That was the, that book changed my life because it was it's about seagulls. Oh. But there, the seagull is going through this pack of seagulls, and he's flying around. He's always kind of strange on the outside and then he meets this older seagull that says Jonathan you don't have to fly with the flock you can be your own bird you can do what you want to do so he tra- started transcending into all these different areas of, of awareness but once once I saw that little that bird tell the uh, one bird tell the other bird you don't have to be with the flock that was my set free moment and I was yeah. off to the races after that because I, I knew I don't have Maybe to you should have given fit. your mom that book oh she wouldn't, <laughs> have, she wouldn't, <laughs> she wouldn't have cared it was hilarious she would have been afraid to read it I know, yeah, it's birds see who's because yeah. of those are birds it's funny yeah, it's, it's funny, funny. Uh, and, and she was fear driven I guess because of her upbringing maybe? yes very yeah. structured and my I think between me and my mother and my grandmother we're about a hundred years back so she mm-hmm. came from a different era and yes. then every generation moves forward Scott yes. was born in the 60s Thank goodness. yeah so I was born in the 60s the Beatles and the whole bit so I was right there even though I was only born literally born in the 60s I still had that mindset and so um, after you read that book um, I, one one thing that you uh, said to me uh, that I thought was really profound is uh, limitations are just perceptions. Yes, they are. Yeah, very true. And I really, uh, I really, thoroughly believe that. Mm-hmm. Uh, y- you know, it's how you perceive things that limit you. And so you never had those limiting perceptions. You just always thought 
you know, no. there's nothing I can't do and the sky's the limit. And Exactly. Yeah. It was, I, I think from now when I was little, from as long as I can remember, I always thought I had a destiny. Mm-hmm. And I always thought I was special in that regard. I had something to do. And it always seemed simple. It was like I thought everybody did. But some people, I, I guess, I still don't know for what other people are thinking. But I just really believe that we come with a destiny and then we kind of get distracted. And the right. point is to stay on point, to right. stay on track. Right. So that's the goal now since I'm past 50. I have to stay on I'm halfway done, right. God forbid. But I'm trying to stay on track. No, and but I this is that. a very good point because I do believe women like us in uh-huh. our 50s uh, are looking at their life saying, have I tapped into my gift uh-huh. and am I doing what I'm meant to be doing here? The reason that I'm here. Yeah. What's my legacy? Exactly. What am I supposed to be doing to make a difference? Yeah. So I know first you did like 25 years in the financial industry. Yes. You were telling me that you had this goal that you wanted to be a good earner and be successful yeah. and you chose stock brokerage and financial Yeah. I didn't uh, want to be path. a good earner. I wanted to be rich, really rich. Oh, okay. Well, I was being like polite, but <laughs> no, <laughs> you no. want to be rich. Okay. <laughs> yes. I saw Wall Street. I figured it can't be that hard, but it right. was, but it was the grind. And sometimes you have to not only be, it's wonderful to be wealthy doing something you love because then that's a form of wealth in itself. Right. right. Because so that wealth was comes it. in many forms. Many, it's not many just forms. money. It's yeah. not just money. In fact, money is the yeah. least... Uh, least relevant thing about being wealthy. Wealthy right. is actual wealthy is li- love, love and peace joy. of mind, yep. joy, getting up in the morning, li- longevity, That's leaving rich. a legacy for your family. That's wealth. Wealth is, you know, wealth comes in many forms and you have to realize that. So you can be wealthy with money and poor everywhere, every place else and you've lost it. You haven't done it. It's right. not right. So it's ha- so that's what made me be more a little bit more serious. When I hit 50, I thought, I've done a lot, but I, I need to do more and I need to be re- really more serious about it. But you were one of the top women on the Stuart James floor. Is that the name of it? Yeah. 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 Long yeah. T- brokerage yeah. Firm, firm. But and, the, and then you worked in commodities for uh, stock options. Yes. Stock, stock options, options for um, countrywide. Yes. And Lydon companies. Industries. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we, we yeah, we had a lot. That was now the corporate so it life was, was good great. to you financially, but it wasn't feeding the rest of your soul. It, yeah. It it allowed me. I worked there while I was able to finish my finish school because it was stable income and I could actually do my homework at lunchtime. So I was doing a double master's while I was running a, a stock options department. But wow, you it allowed me. Grass grow, huh? Yeah. But it, but it was wonderful because it allowed me to get finished. So I, that was great. And then every so I think you go through phases and pieces of your life come together at the proper time. Right. They match. I always think that's exactly what I think. Life is like one big puzzle. Yes. Sometimes you don't even know why you're doing certain things in your life. But then when the whole puzzle comes together, you go, oh, "Oh, that's why uh I did that. Yes. I needed that tool or that understanding for this bigger picture I'm exactly. doing and every little thing you did in your life comes as, together at this time comes together yeah. and and helps you with what your entire mission was here to do exactly yeah. and it's not a straight line it's a de- the oh, deviate to the right not. to the left it's like a journey a trip right. and there, you don't know when the trick about it is you don't know when the last day is or how far you have right. so you have to live each day as really literally each day as if this is it yep. and then you, yep. you got to go for it I know and, that's and, what I do yeah you have to yeah you never know no. Well, we don't know. No, you don't. Know. <laughs> we don't know. So we, gotta, we gotta make, make an assumption. It it's, yeah. what I, I used to say, I used to say tomorrow is a arrogant assumption and you, you, we assume yeah. it's going to be there. Right. Right. Yeah. I'm all about let's 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 squeeze today like a lemon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. Exactly. So after 25 years of that financial grind, you said uh, not for me. Well, yeah. After that, I started a software company, which I'm still working on. And then in between there, I became a publisher. And that part of that was I had a lot of ideas. And I wanted to get them out. So I know the funny thing is you had all these ideas as a kid. And, finally, and so you're I'm finally 50. I'm finally doing what I was thinking about in the teens. Right. So I, you're the thing, allowing yourself to exactly. use that gift. So the lesson yeah. is don't let don't we kill the dream of kids. We try to we when they come here, we kind of tell them this is the path you have to take and don't dream and be really studious and do that. That's the wrong message. You, right. The question is, what are you here to do? How early and, can you tap in instead you. of waiting till you're 50? How, yeah. What is your what are you here to do? And if someone had asked me that, I could have told them. And right. it's, it's never changed. Right. Only now I have the courage to actually do it. Right. But it never deviated. It's the same. It's innovation has been it. So you did a software company, book publishing. Yes. Speaking. Yes. Yeah. Now I'm doing the magazine. 
And the magazine is actually a platform for me to do all the other things I need to do. So I meet people. I get. I can get. I can make money while I'm uh, you know, moving through the rest the rest of my life. Right. So that's that's the yeah. interesting part. Yeah, I feel like this endeavor, 360 Karma Women and the Live Love Thrive Project same and situation. conference, yes. same thing. Everything in my life brought me to where I am now. Exactly. Loving to put people together, mm-hmm. loving to work in the uh, video producing format. And and so I agree with you. Everything we do in our life culminates into the big calling yeah. of what we're meant to do. And and you realize you had, you're developing the skill sets. Like when I got ready to publish the magazine, which is a beautiful magazine, when I got ready to publish the magazine, I go, oh, my God, I could actually do it. I didn't realize that we could do it. And then the ideas came together, and it just came together. The The writers showed up. We've had phenomenal – we have phenomenal writers, phenomenal people participating, like yourself. That's we just awesome. They come Thank together, you. and it's been wonderful. I'm, I'm so excited. I If I hadn't had the courage to step out, I wouldn't have had the journey that I have. If you have the courage, yeah. you'll enjoy the journey, and that's what I will never be afraid to step out that's my will be my one message to people do it with gusto perfect it as you go along with do it right start right yeah and 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 along the way you were the director of nafi tell me about that organization i I still am it's national association of female executives i am the director of nafi los angeles and that's how i started the uh magazine robbie modder uh, made me the director of nafi los angeles i was so excited so then i got all these women to speak, but I only had opportunity for them to speak once a month. Right. So I said, what am I going to do with this other talent? And so I said, I know, I'll do a magazine. So yeah. then I started the magazine, and we got it kind of pulled together, and it literally, once we opened the door to do the magazine, it kind of took its own form. And then uh, that's then we started the magazine and NAFI, and then now NAFI's a part of the magazine, and I've we've brought on nine other, women, nine other women's organizations on top of it. So we have like a readership base of 1.4 million. Wow, Just and I know we have pictures of the magazine. Oh, fantastic! Uh, we're showing, and uh, you have some pretty phenomenal women on the covers. Yes, uh, one of which is I see Elizabeth Warren. Yes, I love yes. her. I what do a, too. What a fireball! Incredible fireball! Yes. That's the word. <laughs> She's That's fearless. the word. She is fearless. She is. Good she for is. her. Yeah, and uh, I know you've had some other amazing women on there. Well, one of the most ex- funniest. Well, I made me think, okay, we, we've almost arrived, was that one morning I woke up, the phone rang, and it was NASA on the phone, and Dr. Peggy Winson was on for an interview, and I was like, oh, my God, NASA, NASA has called me. I'm there. I'm there. Oh so I was so gosh, excited. So I talked to her, incredible. and she's amazing. I mean, we have we have phenomenal women in the world, and, we, and, the, and I mean, I could do 10 other magazines that still not, you know, break the break the uh, tip yeah. of the iceberg with that. And but tell she, us the official name of the magazine. It's, it's E, the magazine for today's female executive. Okay, and that's where people can find it online or Google it. Yeah, or you put Female Executive Magazine or E the Magazine. We pop up everywhere. It's a big orange E. We've made really good uh, inroads with search engine optimization, so we're all over. And so now we're going into something else, but it's it's great. What a wonderful endeavor. Yeah, it's exciting. Um, I I feel the same way with this, getting to have amazing women like you on. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, (laughs) is that uh, we don't tell enough of the women's uh, success stories, and Mm -hmm. we need to tell more to inspire other young women and women our age to step out of the box and step into their own and tap into their life's purpose and make it happen. Exactly. Uh, We need to empower more women to put them in more positions of influence so that the world becomes a better place. And that's my mission. Yeah, absolutely. That's wonderful. Exactly. That's our mission. Yes, our mission. I think that I think that men aren't holding women back. I think we hold ourselves back because we perceive ourselves at we've we now it's no we've got to train women to have that self esteem and belief in Exactly. Themselves. We've seen yeah. ourselves as secondary citizens for so long. Our one, it, this is like for black, for African Americans, there was something called the Willie Lynch theory, where they teach you and they train you to be a slave, and then the slaves train the other slaves. Yeah. So oppressed women train other women how to remain oppressed. Right. So you have to have a a revi- you can't have an oppressed mm-hmm. mom. Well, you can. Like I completely did the opposite. But you you have to have women that are forward thinking to have mm-hmm. other to produce women that are forward thinking. So we have yes, Hillary. You do. So we, we have, have to create more. Great more. We're getting there. Women. Yeah. We're getting there, but it takes okay. time and we can't say can't. And and some people and don't even like consciously understand. It's an unconscious what you're it's deep. It's a very deep like they they, place. they hear you but they don't even know that. They, they can't don't. conceive it. Right. They, like if till some women see Hillary in that seat They'll go, okay, it's possible. Then it'll be normal. One day right. it'll, it'll be, be normal. normal for yeah. a woman to be president. And they'll look back at us and say, why? What was wrong with them? Yeah, right. Exactly. Why, what's the big deal? Right. And of it shouldn't be will. a big deal. But yeah. but look how far along we, it's taken for right. us to get well, here. Well, there was a time was no 
congresswomen or oh, senators that were women. So and yeah, now you could we get think arrested. That that's totally normal. You could have gotten yeah. arrested to try it for voting. Yeah. So not let alone try to run for office. How right. dare you? Right. You know? yeah. Right. And still in the Senate and Congress, we only have about 15 percent are women and we, we're 50 percent of the population. So we've got to work on that. Oh, my God. Yeah. We're 50 percent of the population. That's right. Now, and this is the thing about power. People don't hand over power. You have to take it. So, no, you can't go, please, sir, may have one bowl of soup and one more seat in Congress. It's not going to happen. Right. You've got to take it. And just like the equal pay, you're saying yeah. we can't ask for it. We have to take, take it. it. You're yeah. 50 percent. We right. Once we wake up, they will adjust. Right. We wake up, they'll move forward. Right. They'll get out of the way. Because to me today, it still seems just beyond my belief that there could be a job and a man gets paid different for that same job than a woman. Same job. Yes. And, they, and they're both good at it. But they get paid two different things. Isn't Why amazing? would we settle for that? I don't understand. It, we, and, and it happens in the movie and in, in the entertainment industry all the time. Like a- Every industry. Exactly. Yeah. I'm thinking why. And then for some reason, but, well, I can tell you why. There is such thing as old boys network. And oh. men come together and they plan and they're handling us. And I'm because, so happy you're saying this yeah. because this is exactly what I'm oh, saying yeah. is that. There we is. need an old girls network, but who Thank wants to belong you. to that? Yeah. So I call it the bold girls network. The bold girls, I, the my, bold girls yeah. network. We got to help each other. We got to. We got to uh, give each other business, support Don't each ask, other's businesses. Do it. Do the same thing the yes. guys do. The, yes. They got it. They've got it down. And that testosterone is something else. It really instead, is. Instead, we've been segregating ourselves. It's yes. kind of been our own fault. It is. And so. No matter what ethnicity, no matter what religion, no matter what, yes. no matter what age, band together. we need to band together. Must do it. You must there's, do there's, it. There's truth to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I said it first on, on my website, and now it's Hillary's saying, but mm-hmm. Stronger Together yes. is is no joke. No, it's no joke. And you yeah. have to, and trust me, one, they look, when you sit at the table, because I've been the only woman at many boardroom situations, and when you sit at the table and clear your throat and start to talk, when you speak with authority, they back down. They don't challenge you. Once they know you know what you're talking about, right. but if you go in there meek and humble and say, oh, please, may I, I if I yeah. have to ask you, my God, yeah. I have to turn over the table. Right. You have to go in there with this, and you have to meet them toe to toe. Right. And they back, they don't, they don't have a problem with it. Right. You just, they're not going to slow down for you to catch up. Right. Just run past them. Right. That's it. Just so, run past. <laughs> so one of the things I know you're launching a new entity uh, as part of your business. Yes. That's, uh, and I want you to tell us about that because that's exciting because it's empowering to women. Yes, it is. It's called mm-hmm. ETM Media and it's uh, the website is etmmedia.net and ETM is it's a spinoff. It's not open to the public It's yet, not open right? to the public yet, but it, but it will be coming soon. Yeah. And the whole thing, our you're, tag, you're hearing it first here. First year, yeah. <laughs> the tagline is uh, news from a balanced perspective. So instead of having two women and eight guys at the table discussing issues, Issues. We'll have breaking news, daily news. Every three days, we'll turn, we'll be turning out all the content. But uh, we'll have we'll have equal amounts of men and women at the table having the conversation. Right. So we won't. We women are important in problem solving. We problem solve differently. Right. We we're more comprehensive. We think about the if thens, not just marching through the door for the immediate gratification. And we think long term. Right. So that is bigger why picture. bigger picture healing. When we tear when something's torn down, we are always thinking how to put it back together. I mean, we do m- magical things in families every single day. The fact that we get everybody out the door dressed mm-hmm. and looking decently insane, mm-hmm. we do that every day, and we so we know how to manage people. It's, you know, so we think about it. We think about the after effect, the cause and effect, and a lot of times you have people that don't do that. Uh, right. Male dominated situations. It's that's why we keep fighting because that's what they do. They they understand, you know, divide and conquer. We are more bringing together, bridge building, long term right. solutions. How do we make it work? And with more women in the House and Congress, uh, I think we would reach more compromise mm-hmm. because of that very fact Absolutely. that that's what women bring to the yeah. table. So, if the House and Senate. Republican or Democrat. Exactly. We're 50% women and 50% men. Things would be done. Things would get done. And they'd and be done long forward. term and they'd be done completely. Right. Because we, that's what we are able to do. Right. We've been so, doing it since the beginning of time. Right. You know, we've been keeping it together behind so, the scenes. So the message is uh, get behind uh, women that are running for Senate and Congress in yes. any office, yes. wink, wink, uh, that are qualified. Exactly. We're not saying put any woman in, but put the qualified women in there because Mm -hmm. we need uh, half of the women, uh, half of the people at the table to be women in order to uh, put this planet on the right path. Yeah. Uh, we need the power. Areas. We need the solution solvers to reflect the the population. That's all. Fifty percent. Fifty percent. That's there you all. Go. And we same need to look like we're governing and everything. That's it. That's yeah. it. 
I and, totally believe that. Right. And uh, and stop separating ourselves. And well, you know, yeah. this is the deal. When when they used to have two, when you have only when somebody says there's a space, there's two spaces for board members, two women. So you have all these qualified women. They start fighting each other instead of saying no. There's 12 seats. Six of them should be women. We right. never make that bigger statement. Right. So we have to make the bigger statement. Whatever right. the company is, right. challenge it. We need to change it. And guess I'm what? I'm on a board ho- now that's like eight men and two women, and I keep saying. We need half women. Of course, they're going to ignore you because they're yeah. going to pretend like they don't see you. But you got to get yeah. you got to. But now I start saying, well, "How about this woman? How about that woman?" Yeah, and I'm slowly building building it, into it up. Fifty yeah. yeah. percent. Yeah. And then the worst case scenario is like we're not going to buy your. We're not. We're, you can't say it because you're on the board. But a, a very effective way. When once it affects dollars, people pay attention. Right. As long as you're just asking, please, maybe hopeful. No. Yeah. It has to affect the dollars. Once yeah. it affects dollars, people move forward. They say, had, oh, she, she got a point. And I had someone on the show that's doing a leadership program mm-hmm. where they're going into companies and showing them that by having women in uh, higher positions, their company will actually be more profitable. Of and course. there's proof of this. Yes. Like there's research that shows the companies that have more balance at the top mm-hmm. are more profitable, more successful. Exactly. And as a business owner, I would think that, or CEO, that that would be important to them. That knowing that balance will make them more successful. So it's a win-win. It is a win-win, yeah. and also we're not displacing men. We're just wanting right. to have equal. This is a new time. We are in right. a new day, a new era. So we have to transition. Right. The, the practices you have now have been in place for for hundreds and hundreds of years. Right. So we have to transition. That's all. We're not asking for anything that's unreasonable. Right. Fifty. If I was asking for eighty percent, I'd be unreasonable. But fifty percent, since I am fifty percent, being a woman. Right. Give it. Give me the space. So, what is your advice uh, to other women about uh, finding their purpose and, uh, you know, doing what you're doing, like uh, living your dream and doing what you're meant to be doing to make the world a better place? <laughs> living my dream. I like yeah. sixteen hour days. It's yeah. it's yeah. But well, but, I but but living your dream that you created the magazine. Oh yeah. And, I mean, I love it. But yeah. it's, it it your dream yeah, I mean, costs vis- you. Yeah. yeah. It's not free. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, I would say I would say that to to uh, start out with what you want to do and then gradually perfect each piece of it but just be patient with yourself and start in the path you should be you should be an avid learner people should be able to give you advice and you should be willing to put your ego aside and do whatever it is if you have to dump the trash go to a board meeting do everything you have to do in the same day be versatile and make it happen it'll happen if you just start knocking it down your dream will come to fruition yeah so move your ego out and just you let can't your, there's no room for an ego let your heart and yeah. spirit lead you and that's it don't let anything get in the way and yes. uh, like the jonathan uh, livingston seagull exactly. just think out of the box and yeah. don't fly with the flock just exactly. fly your own path fly your own path and yeah. don't stop you should be if if anything you should you should die on the on the path of where you're going to go. You should never stop. Never stop. Yeah. That's love what that. I would say that. Yeah. Well, thank you for being on the show. Oh, you're a real you. inspiration. Thank you. And uh, I know everybody out there will enjoy your E Women magazine for female executives. Yes. Today's female executives. Yes. <laughs> and tomorrow's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm so glad that you guys are a sponsor of our upcoming conference, which will be November yes. 12th, the Live Love Thrive Conference. And uh, if you want to see more Live Live Thro- uh, Live Love Thrive programs, <laughs> you can see them on iTunes, mm-hmm. and uh, you can also check out our YouTube 360 Karma Women and join us on Facebook. Uh, we'd uh, love to have you join us every week here on Live Love Thrive. Hugs and happiness to all, and be sure to live love and thrive this week and every day. Take care. <laughs> Do you want to have more passion and purpose in your day-to-day? Are you yearning to ignite your power within? Now, more than ever, the world needs women who dream big, inspire others, and are living their greater purpose. There's never been a better time to up your game and make your success happen now. Contact Danny Rukin for a complimentary consultation and find out more about how you can become more effective, energized, and empowered while making a difference in doing what you love. Go to www.dannyrukin.com. The Live Love Thrive program is brought to you in part by Honda of downtown Los Angeles, supporting the equality and empowerment of women. The Live Love Thrive radio show is produced by 360karma.com. Are you a 360 Karma woman? If so, spread the word. Be sure to follow us on social media at 360 Karma Women on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.
Please like us and share us with family and friends. This is the year of the woman, and we are stronger together.